The Larktail Caravan Coupe is a two-seater wagon. It's one of the newest releases from Larktail. It can take kids from six months old up to 65 pounds in the seat, and it has an optional footwell. The seats also have an option to do a little bit of recline so that you can be more comfortable for naps on the go, and there is an optional pull handle that you can attach to the front or remove if you don't want that feature at that time. There are three colorway options, and two of them are currently sold out because a lot of people were really excited about this release, so I'm really excited to bring you all of the details. This is the best job we've ever seen Larktail do of packaging. Everything was very well wrapped, and there were thick foam in places to protect anything from getting scratched up or dented. So yeah, there's a lot to remove, but it's well worth it, and it definitely did a good job of protecting the stroller wagon during transport. We're going to be comparing the coupe to the 2023 version of the Larktail Caravan and to the Pronto Squared. This one has been requested many times, so hopefully you guys will subscribe and stay tuned for that because it's going to be really, really good comparison. For assembly, the first thing you want to do is unlock this manual locking clip, and then you want to do this as quickly as you can. Just one swift motion. It might be a little stiff like mine was, but that's okay. Otherwise, it'll be pretty easy to open up. You just pull up on that frame. I don't believe this part was in the instructions that you need to attach the back axle. This is where the brake is. For some reason, mine felt slightly wider than the actual frame of the coupe. So I had to kind of shove one side of it in. Once I got one side slipped on, I had to shove the other side of it to make sure that it would actually slide on. It was a little bit, a little bit strange, but that also made it super duper snug. So don't be afraid to give it some muscle to really push in on it. I ended up having to use my hips so that I could use my core muscles to actually get it on there. But once you do that and it is in position all the way up against those silver pegs, you want to push those silver pegs in so that they will completely lock in and the back axle will be secure. From here, we're going to go ahead and put on the back tires. Now, the first one I had no problem with. The second one, for some reason, I noticed I had a little more trouble with. I've noticed on the Lark Tails that if you are having trouble putting a tire on, just make sure that you push that release button and it will slide on a lot easier. So there's a little pro tip if you're having trouble with your back tires. From here, we'll move on to the front tires. Now, these are also easy. They don't have a left or right side designated like the crossover did. So you can go ahead and just pop those right on. Again, if you're having any trouble, just push that quick release button that you can see right there on the side and they will slip on no problem. Next, we move on to seat installation. There are three parts to this. There is this clip that is on the back. There is a zipper that goes across the bottom. And part three is threading the crotch buckle through the bottom of the stroller wagon. Step one, we're going to get these zipped on. If you have a hard time, don't worry about it. It's all black in there and the zippers are a little small. Not a big deal, but for most people, this is going to be a snap. We're just going to go ahead and zip those on. And then you can do the clip that is on the back of the seat attaches to this little tiny nubbins that's on the back of the chair on the frame there. It's very similar to the one that is used for the manual locking strap when you are folding the stroller wagon. We like the quality of the seat belts on these. It feels like actual seat belt material. I don't know if that is or not, but we do like that. It feels like it's gonna last a long time. You go ahead and get that second seat zipped on and then do that little clip on the back and then your harnesses are next. If you've ever owned a stroller wagon, you've probably had to do this before. You're simply threading this through the bottom of the stroller wagon. There's a couple of layers there, maybe like a plastic layer, a couple layers of fabric, but it's not too hard. You can see it here from the bottom as well, if that helps any of you visual learners. This is also the best visual for that release button for the back tire, so we figured we'd show you right now. It's very easy to use once you know where it is. Turning this baby over, we're gonna go ahead and show you the release button for the front tires as well as the locking system for the front tires. Now, very, very obvious and easy to find. This is the release button for those front tires. Comes in handy when you are putting them back on. Now, the locking mechanism was interesting because it doesn't make a noise. So I actually wasn't sure when it was engaged or not engaged. You're gonna have to just test it out like I did because I didn't know if it was actually even working. If you've seen our other videos, then you know how much I love a good front locking tire. Moving along to the canopies, these plastic clips attach here to the frame on each side, and there are also Velcro pieces where the canopy attaches to the frame. For some reason, one of six came with this protective Velcro piece, but you can see here the longest goes across the back of the frame there. I'm a little worried about this attachment style because Velcro does wear out, and you do have to undo these canopies every time you fold the stroller wagon, so it seems like a lot of use might wear that Velcro out. We'll see how that stands up to the test of time. Now that you have those plastic clips securely in place, you're going to see the Velcro on the underside of the canopy there that attaches all around that back side of the frame. While Velcro does wear out with use, it's actually very user-friendly, so that is a plus. 
Without the mesh canopy extension open, this is what the coverage for the Caravan Coupe looks like. We're going to have seat to canopy measurements in the comparison video. These can be really useful because this style of canopy is more quickly outgrown than some other styles, just to make sure if you're going to buy the Caravan Coupe that your child will fit in there and not be pushing up against the top of that canopy. On the right side of the wagon, you can see what the canopy looks like when the extension is open, but the recline is not engaged. On the other side, the recline is fully engaged, but the canopy has the mesh extension closed. We're hoping that these thorough visuals are helpful. We noticed that while the recline is very easy to use, there's just one button on the underside of either side of the frame. It's not that easy to lock in place when the canopies are open. When there's no canopies, it's very easy to lock. Hopefully this will help you see what I'm talking about. I really pushed on each corner trying to lock out that recline, but as soon as I pushed it, it went right back in. We recommend engaging the recline when the canopy is not on. Also, if you're not using the recline mode, I recommend pushing these sides of the fabric out because they do tend to protrude into the child's seating area, which may not be as comfortable. We did find these attachment points that are not addressed in the instruction manual, but upon further research, I found that there is a car seat adapter coming. There are two storage pockets on either side of the wagon on the inside there in the seating area. And with the harness here, you can see it's fully adjustable upward with those slots for shoulder height, but also on the belt itself. Now these three to five point harnesses are very nice. They don't just fall apart like some other ones do, and you can make it just a lap belt if you prefer. Some harnesses tend to fall apart if you have a wiggly baby, you have to do each piece by piece, and it can just drive you nuts if you're trying to get your kid in and they are just throwing a tantrum or something. So Larktail definitely pulled this one off really well. Moving along to the optional footwell here, there is no handle to pull it up, so you just gotta grab it by the side, and there are zippers on either side. Now there is no zipper built into the footwell to throw any foot or shoe debris out, which is a little bit unfortunate. But you can see here that there are zippers on either side. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, we keep it real on the channel. This was the first time that I tried to do this optional footwell, and I had a really hard time. These zippers feel very small, so it's definitely doable, but give yourself some grace take a little practice. If it takes you a minute to do it on the first try, that is perfectly okay. It'll get easier with time. Honestly, we've found that we generally just leave it up or down. We don't necessarily like engage it on the go. So if you're like us, then you won't have to do this very often anyway. The footwell is made of a nice non-slip material. So I think it's gonna be heavy duty enough to stand up to little kid's feet going in and out of it regularly. Just as I thought that second zipper was definitely easier. This little pocket can carry one pound and it is the only built-in parent organization. Now the Caravan Coupe does come with these two little bags. One of them is the parent organizer and the other one is what they call like a storage organizer or something like that. It looks almost exactly the same, but it clips on and you can put, I guess, kids cups here. Not exactly good for coloring or anything like that, but it can carry some extra stuff. The cool thing is though, is that it does have these clips that are built onto the back of it and you can hang it from different parts of the wagon. So you'll see here, they have their own little carrying pouch that's built onto the inside and you can just pop those right out. And we tried it in two different places for you. We put it right here on the side so you can see how that looks. Now this can carry up to five pounds. You're not gonna be going grocery shopping with it, but it is nice to have extra storage no matter how it comes. We also try to hear on the back of the canopy. It's a little bit tricky in that that Velcro is going across the entire back of the seat. However, it, it's okay, it'll still work. You can pop it on the back there and simply just push the Velcro down around the clips and it holds on sturdy enough. If you're going to store something this way, I recommend putting things that you don't mind if they get stolen because this is on the far side of the wagon where you won't be able to see if someone walks by and ducks their hand in that bag. They also included this parent organizer. It clips on just like the Pronto one does. If you've ever seen one of those or you're familiar, clips right on the inside of the handle there. It has two built-in mesh cup holders. It has a magnetic flap to keep some of your items that are in your parent organizer away from prying eyes. And it also has two pockets that are on the front. One of them is mesh and one of them has a little magnetic closure as well. The coupe also comes with a parent cup holder and a rain cover. Now I didn't unbox that because we won't really use it where we live, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure you attach this cup holder on the correct location. One of them is for that locking strap. It does not go there. It goes on this bigger notch here. That's where it clips down and secures. The leatherette covered handlebar is adjustable and it just uses two buttons, one on either side of the frame. There is also a built-in peekaboo window on each canopy. And while there are magnets built in to keep it closed, there are no magnets built into the canopy itself to keep it open.
Now you get to see the included optional pull bar. It attaches right on the front here, just like it did on the crossover. If you've seen that unboxing that we did, and it is exactly the same thing. You can open it up with this little button that's on the side and you can adjust it to different heights. It also has a spring built in so it doesn't just fall down, which is awesome. The next two clips are gonna be our demo for you of how long it takes to fold it down and the steps that are involved with that process and how long it takes to set it back up. Keep in mind though that if you're not using the canopies or you're not using the recline function, it will go a little faster for you as you do need to fold those canopies down every time you fold it and you have to push that recline right back into place. So you'll see here that I'm going ahead and I'm taking off the clips on the back of each seat. You have to do that every time so you can fold the seats down. After that, you're going to undo this canopy Velcro on the back and fold the canopies in. After you get those canopies folded in toward the center of the wagon and you get your pole handle tucked away like I do right here, you're going to engage those white pull levers on either side of the frame up by the handlebar. That handlebar is gonna pull forward and fold in down toward the body of the wagon. From here, you can now lock it with that little manual locking strap. And if you wanna make it even a little more compact, you can go ahead and move that handlebar down to its lowest position. One of the nice things about the caravan coupe is that you can leave that parent organizer on when folding as well as the parent cup holder. Now, I was expecting the standing fold to take place over the big tires like they usually do on stroller wagons. However, I noticed it doesn't work that way on the caravan coupe. The standing fold actually takes place over the small front tires, so you do need to remove that pull bar if you want to do a standing fold with the caravan coupe. We did get a good chuckle when I did it for the first time and noticed that the tires splay out like that. It just, it's a little bit of a funny sight. Now to set up, of course, you're basically just gonna do everything in reverse. You're gonna release that manual locking strap, pull it open and engage that adjustable handlebar to your comfortable height. After that, you're gonna to wanna to open up those canopies a little bit so you can get the seats engaged. Much easier to do when the canopy is not on so that you can reach that nubbins easily. Now you go ahead and pop those canopies up and secure the Velcro on the back of each seat. If you are gonna be using the recline function on the seats or if you are gonna be adding that pull handle, you're gonna to wanna to add a little bit more time to your unfold and setup. The brake is pretty standard setup for the lark tail. However, I noticed this one is more tucked away under the frame. So you actually have to put your foot a little bit under the frame there to engage it. Or maybe you won't if you have more dainty feet than I do. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you see our individual review and the three-way comparison to come. Thank you for watching. I hope that it's been helpful and I hope that you will like, share, and subscribe as it really does help our channel. If you have any comments or questions that I can help with, of course, feel free to drop them below and we'll get back to you ASAP. See you on the next one. Bye.